I'm going to go over two tickers on the five minute time frame and give you price targets for Tuesday. First up is ONMD. We ended the week at $2.30, up a whopping 56%. Congratulations if you've made some money off of this trade. This is where we are at the middle of the trend and the baseline. Above that, at two standard deviations and one level of resistance and a potential take profit area, 298. Above that, 335. And at four standard deviations, 368. To the south side, a gap begins at roughly 160, and that's at negative two standard deviations and one level of support. The gap, which is very tiny, closes out at 150. And to the south side of that, another gap forms near negative three standard deviations, roughly 126-ish. And at negative four standard deviations, and another level of support, 85 cents. And then this gap closed to the south side at 47 cents. Note the 52 week low is 42 cents and the 52 week high, $13.51. That's a major rug pull. Now looking left, the gap formed right here on the evening of the 22nd. And then it's still in play so when we reverse course and start to go down, I will anticipate these gaps to close to the south side. And one other thing to show you. Note the sell-off here at resistance, the take profit area right here. People locked in and then they left. Same with this area. This tiny, tiny little baby gap also closed. We gapped down and closed up. And the sell-off here, and then the consolidation that happened. And then the rip up to resistance again, and we push through to roughly four standard deviations, and then a sell-off. Lock, people locked in and they left. Consolidation here. And now what's gonna happen? Well, the RSI is turning down on the five minute. So we could possibly start making our way down and I'm going to flip this to the daily time frame and see what buy and sell signals we get. So look at this. We are overextended on the daily in the big picture. So I will anticipate just like on the five minute, the RSI is turning down on the weekly. It is shooting straight up and on the monthly starting to go up as well but on the five minute and the daily there might be some sort of correction before possibly another leg up check out the MACD as well and obviously you can turn on your VWAP Bollinger Bands your trade lines Fibonacci retracements, whatever you like to do, play your patterns, but keep your eyes out on the RSI. I, I could also trade just using the RSI too and not using any of this. Now I'm going to go to CRM, a sponsor of Formula One. And thank you to Murat who is a trader and he clued me in on this one and mentioned that could this be a buying opportunity before earnings? The Ford PE is 28. Oops. That, well, that was my period, I guess. I was confused for a moment. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to move that or get rid of it. All right. So the Ford P is 28, the RSI is low, and he sees a gap to the south side. So I will talk about that in just a moment. But first, let's give you some prices. We ended the week at 272.29, down two and a quarter percent. The day's low, 268, 53, 
274.96 and then the 52 week low 193 the 52-week high 318.71 the one-year price target is now three hundred and thirty six dollars and thirty four cents which represents a 23 percent to the upside from where we are now this is where oops this is where we landed To the north side takes us to two standard deviations and resistance and a potential take profit area. 275.44. The gap closes out at three standard deviations, roughly 277. Let me fix that. 53 ish. And then at four standard deviations, 279.60. Now, from where we are, I do not anticipate us to close this out and then go past it on Tuesday but we can definitely make our way up. I will always take profit at two standard deviations. If I'm getting a little greedy, then three. And then if I'm thinking, oh, I'm gonna play long-term, they have to give me a lot of money to get me out, like in real estate, if you're gonna offer me a lot of money, then maybe I'll sell it back to you. But if I'm trying to just hang on and just let it ride, I set my sell limits up here or possibly here, but if I wanna get in and out of a trade and do swing trades, it's negative two standard deviations and two standard deviations all day long where price falls. And then obviously different levels in between. Now, back to the middle of the trend and the baseline where all price goes through to get to the downside or if we're going to the upside and we're down, then, a pop, then we're passing through the middle of the trend. This is basically the neutral zone and price could go follow the line wherever that line may be because the computations change depending upon what time frame you play in the one minute the three minute five minute whatever it is but just for giggles i am going to draw the middle of the line and so price could go follow this down because we are in a downward channel or just consolidate and grind to the right. Okay, so to the south side, 271.22, 267.10, 265 and 262.91. Looking left, note the bounce at support, the rip up to resistance, and you know what happens at resistance, People take their profits and they leave. They lock in and they leave. And then now we're trying to push through resistance again. When we are down here and we go up to here, that's resistance. From here, going back down, turns into support. And note the clear sell signal here if you are trying to take profit. Here and here. I never anticipate price to stay in at four standard deviations from wherever we are, it just doesn't typically happen. That is not typical. And if it happens, expect people to sell and take their profit and then buy back in at a better price. See, then the buy-in and the run-up didn't make it to resistance, gone, went sideways, back down, pushing through resistance again. But this is consolidation right here. And this gap, we gapped up. I anticipate it to fill to the south side and we filled right here on Friday. Oh, is it Thursday? Thursday, the 23rd. Now, oh, did I say, did I point this out? There's a gap to the north side at two, let me fix this, 286.44 and 294.32 but note we are in a downward channel so we are going farther away from this zone we're not in the channel not in the zone but when we reverse course to the downside because we're going down still even though we went up well we went down 2.25 percent but the price target is on on this swing up okay but 
we're going down and then you just check the RSI we are turning up we have not hit 70 and above yet we're not quite overextended we've got room to go but since we're down here I anticipate we could ride up to here maybe even to here and then fall back down again because you cannot expect the RSI to stay at a critical area without taking a breather as well and that's what you see right here on let me just do the daily time frame for your RSI going down on the daily on the weekly going down and I always watch things on the monthly that's when I like to troll for good values oh my goodness my neighbor is having a graduation party and a million people are driving by in my little cul-de-sac here now for the monthly since I'm here I might as well just go over this I've tracked this many times in the past and back in January 2022 tip ranks said the high was 337.81 uh, 87 excuse me and I checked it in February back in April 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 so it looks like 300 was the lowest okay now and it's 2024 and what are we at 272 what goes up must go down what goes down doesn't necessarily go back up again but sometimes you have to get down to get back up again. That's for stocks and in life. Okay, that was very cheesy, I know. But it's true. Now, where did this go? Now, Marat has pointed out this stock to me many times in the past. Back when we were at 174 in that region. And look at you now. Fantastic. And then he... I'll, I'll have to show this to you. Um, well, no, maybe it'll work. So he pointed this out when it was also 183.80, made a comment, and anytime he makes a comment or anyone else, I do like to check out the stock because I look at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stocks. I'm talking actually the thousands in a month. So sometimes I just don't go back and look at it for a very long time. So I appreciate Marat pointing it out to me because sometimes I don't even know what videos to make. I mean, I know most people know how to trade already and and it takes a lot of time to do this, but I enjoy it, so that's why I do it. All right, so it's hard to see, but we are right 272.29. We are right here. Okay, and the next target up is 318, playing that wick, but that's the one year price target according to the analysts. Let me turn that green. This was an old price target. This was an old price target. And this white line was an old target too. But from this move, I'll do it off of, I'll do it off the body. From that move to this high point right here, that's a 132% return. And Command Z, if you accidentally move something you didn't want to move. So Marat pointed CR, oh, Command Z. There we are. Right here, 183.80. Oops. Let's just say right there. So from that move to this high was a 67% return on your money. So not too shabby there either. But this move from here to here, let me just 
just do it off of the body. And right there was a 50 cent, 56% move to the downside. So obviously we've been all over the place. Now let's check this out on the weekly time frame. Oops. I'm going to delete this now because it makes the chart look messy. And I want to point out, I'll do it on the on the week on the daily. I'm on the weekly. It's hard to see there, but this gap is still in play. A threat to our account to the south side, unfortunately. And that will take us down to 19041 and roughly 167.90. We are in an upward channel on the weekly, so it could take quite a while to get back down here, but that is a possibility for a correction. And then obviously people will buy off the dip and this is support, so that would make sense. But price-wise, oops, I forgot to turn off my ringer. All right. This, there, 272. See how when you flip to the different time frames, trading view gets wonky on you. 272.29. Here, let me just show you. To the upside, that will take us to 323.33. So very close to here. I mean, if we're gonna make it there, why wouldn't we make it to, at the next move, 363, 364.23, and then back to the middle of the trend and the baseline will take us to roughly 243.15, and then this gap filled. Now let's go to the daily. Where did I put the price? Let me just go back to the, oh my goodness. Let me just go to the 15 minute. Oh. I just turned off my ringer. I'm getting distracted. So we are, oh, I think I, I, think I found it. Oh my gosh. Here it is. So we are, oh my gosh, see how wonky my chart got by switching over to the different time frame? Right here. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm gonna wrap this up. But let me just do one thing on the daily, which is to the north side on the daily, is roughly 296.29. And from where we are, back down to support on the daily and a potential buy-in area, 259.52. And on the daily time frame, check this out, your clear buy signal here at support. This is resistance busted through and we filled did we fill? Oh, we gotta, I have to talk about this. Oops, Command Z, Command Z. So this gap closed right there, touched at 262.71. This gap, we gapped down, we filled to the upside, touched right here at roughly 255.86. And what is this? Uh, I'm gonna have to look at this one and clean it up later. But the this one, that's a big one that has been in play that I've talked about in the past, which it's been a while, but on November 30th again, 29th, 30th. 
So this gap will take us down to 23080. Right there. Again. And then this one at 16790. But again, we are going in an upward channel, so hopefully we don't go back down to here, but gaps do tend to fill and I consider it a buying opportunity. Buy when people are afraid and running the other way. And that's true of real estate as well. And I think that's all I wanted to point out to you. I'll clean up a couple of these other gaps because I don't know. Oops, CRM. Here they go. Let me just clean this one up. Yeah, so I talked about this gap. Yeah, right there. So we gap down, I anticipated it to fill to the upside and that took us to 259.81, ran up at resistance, fell back down, and these were your buying opportunities, and then another run up. All right, that does it for me. Let me flip this back to the five minute time frame. So we've got opportunities to the upside and gaps galore to the downside. So watch out for those landmines. That's a look at CRM and ONMD. Thanks so much for watching.